Um, welcome, everybody, and thank you for joining us here today. So good to see some familiar faces, well, see you guys virtually, and um, we hope you've all been coping with COVID and welcome back to schools. We just thought we'd give you a bit of a, you know, a bit of a welcome back, a bit of a run through about Juno and the services we provide and how we can help you going forward. Um, and we hope that you take something out of today. Andrew, can you still hear me? Yep, loud and clear now. Thank you. Before we start, just wanted to check if people are aware we have closed captions available. You should now see that you can turn that on. Excellent. In your, in your, in your Zoom toolbar. If you require that. So sorry for the late start, folks. Uh, I was all set with a test run about 45 minutes ago, but it all went pear-shaped as I went to go live. We've done a few of these webinars, and if you haven't participated, although you're probably exhausted from webinars, you know that you can ask questions via the Q&A box at any time throughout the presentation and we'll allow ample time to respond to those questions and certainly um, do our best to make sure everybody leaves here with a lot more knowledge than they started with. For people who are, are seeing us for the first time or me anyway, um, as you may not know that word of mouth technology is a proud supplier of a whole range of assistive technology that supports um, listening, learning, um, technology for deaf and hard of hearing people as well. And we've been doing it for about 25 years now. So we are proud of that history of being experts in this field. And we hope that we can um, you know, continue to support you in the way that you used to um, in the past. And I'm sure we can do. Really great to have Mary on board with our team who's been with us for, I'd say, more than 12 months now, Matt. I'm going to say yes, it's been here for more than 12 months. Um, yes, correct, it has been more than 12 months. Andrew, there's a few people that can't hear you, so I'm just trying to work out why that might be. Okay, cool. So they can't hear me at all. because I've certainly got my mic on. I'll just... Mic's just... Um, I'm just trying to work that out. I can... I can hear you. Yep. So I can hear you, but I'm just checking... Um, I've just switched microphones. Liz back. says she can't hear you, so... Uh, All right, you happy for me to continue, Mary? Uh, yes, continue. Cool. So um, when we're using the... Continue on. When we're using our front row Juno, what we're going to run through is just the basics and hopefully a little bit of extra stuff that can show you the value this product has to offer particularly as we move with kids coming back to school in this new COVID environment. And we really feel if what's been going on with education and classroom sound systems in the States is anything to go by, we're going to see a significant growth in how we see these products helping in the learning space. <clears throat> the Listening environment for kids, for a lot of the people that are participating here today, I mean, this may not be anything too new to you, but it's important to think about how much sound and learning and listening our kids are exposed to. And when we talk about that, it's really interesting to see this statistic that says 
By the kids that are aged four, we estimate that they've heard approximately 45 million words. That's a lot of listening. And when we talk about what kids need to hear in the learning environment, we must be aware that children need a significantly higher signal to noise ratio than adults do. Now, again, this may be information that some of the people listening today are quite familiar with, but for new participants, it's really important to understand this and why it's necessary to have a higher signal to noise ratio um, is the simple fact that for kids, even with normal hearing, their auditory pathways aren't fully developed until they're mid to late teens. So kind of in, in simple terms, what this means is they lack life experience plus the um, auditory pathways, if we talk about them inside the brain, they lack the auditory pathway maturity to link up what they're hearing with actual language that they're understanding. So um, it's really important to ensure that we make speech clearer and signal to noise is simply making the signal being the voice of what we wanna hear louder than the background noise. Any questions on that topic yet, Mary? None at all, that's great. Sorry, I forgot to unmute myself, sorry. I just checking. <laughs> sorry, that's me. <laughs> Don't forget guys, you can um, send in through your questions just through the Q&A section so just um, feel free to post some questions as we go and we'll get through them yeah when continue we, on when we look at that signal to noise challenge what we're looking at in a classroom and this graphic depicts i guess a very uh cellular traditional learning environment and we know today's classrooms don't necessarily look like this we don't have kids sitting in rows in chairs but what we do have are rooms which are you know sometimes up to eight or nine metres deep and about seven metres wide. And naturally, every kid can't sit right here in front of the teacher um, or in front of the sound source. So any further you are away puts you at a disadvantage to hearing and understanding what's being said. And really simply, when we talk about how sound works, for every metre that our voice travels, it drops about six dB. So that means no matter how well you think you can speak or you think you are entrained to project your voice, you can't make your voice as clear for the person who's further away. And our sound field system simply tries to assist in managing that problem by lifting the frequencies of your voice that are critical to intelligibility so that kids who are further away have a better opportunity to understand as much as the person at the front of the classroom does. And our sound field system, as, a, as I've mentioned, is really a tool to assist with that. <clears throat> when we talk about understanding speech, we know that it's one thing to hear speech, but about understanding it, and we talk about a statistic that says that about seven metres away, we think that about 36% of what is being said is actually understood. Now, granted, seven metres is a reasonable distance. It's nearly the back of the classroom in most learning environments, but there's always going to be some students who are that far away. And we are really stressing to you the value of using this technology for everybody's benefit, because if you don't, the kids at the back of the room are at a significant disadvantage. The Front Row Juno system, I'm wearing it now, I'm using the microphone, wearing it around my neck, and while there's no one in the room here to listen to me, just using the system myself makes me more aware of how much clearer my voice is when I use the system compared to when I turn it off. It's not as easy to um, demonstrate that uh, over, the, over the Zoom chat, but if you've used one in the classroom, you know what I'm talking about. Now, setting the systems up in the classroom, if we run through the real basics, most of the time, this speaker is going to be in the front right or corner of the room. And if we need to, we can place it up to about, I'd say one third, one half of the way down the side walls if we have to. 
but normally I like to see it front of the room in the right or left hand corner. And what that does is it means that we're sending the sound in the direction that the voice of the teacher who's doing most of the talking is being sent. Now, we don't like to place it at the back of the room because it's unnatural to, to amplify speech in, the, in opposite directions, right? It sounds weird when you're listening and looking this way, but the sound's coming to you from behind. So we wanna try and push it in that direction most of the time. When I'm using the Juno system, we've got obviously a volume control and a lot of other settings we'll talk about. But as far as the positioning goes, this um, little stand is something that would be adequate. So making sure the product sits at about waist height on a bench or a table. It's not acceptable to place it on the floor. And we don't want to mount it horizontally above or below a TV. So most of the projects we work on, this product will be mounted on the wall beside the TVs or in the corner of the room. Um, and if you've got them in classrooms that are existing, remember, they can be mounted on the wall. I like mounting these products because I feel like it gives the classroom a better sense of ownership of the technology. And it's something that leads us to better acceptance and usage of it as a teaching tool every day, rather than it being the device that we just put on when the student with some additional needs is in the classroom. We want it to be something that we see value in everybody using all the time. The product, of course, has a five year warranty. Um, there's lots of accessories. You know, there's great examples of schools where we've got Junos in it, say Salesian College. Now they started using them as voice amplification. Over the years, we've now got them in almost every classroom. And we now have upgraded them to a new product we've got called Front Row Conductor. And what that is, is over the school's network, we now run all of the school bells, PA and intercom through the Juno systems. So that in effect means the office can page this classroom, the office voice, the staff at the office, their voice comes through the tower and I can talk back to them through this microphone rather than having to go over to a telephone on the wall or ask a student to run down to the office and ask what's happening, it all happens through this. So it's really exciting, the potential, but in its very base form, it's a great tool for clearer speech. With the microphones, just pausing for a moment too, Mary, if you wanted to interrupt with any questions, let me know. We actually have two microphones and the teacher's microphone and the student mic. Now both of these and the Juno product work on an infrared platform. Now infrared means the signal is contained within the room. It doesn't mean you actually have to look at the speaker all the time to, to make it work, okay? So you can stand around and look the other way, you can face the wall. The signal reflects off the surfaces and it's picked up by this receiver on the top of the device. The teacher's microphone has a simple mute button on the front of it to turn your voice off and on again. And it's both powered by our lithium ion batteries. So it means we can probably get about eight hours of operating time, which is more than necessary. And charging them is really easy as well. At the end of the day, you just take off your microphone, and you can pop it in this little charging dock here, which charges the microphones. For those of you who don't have the charger, you can also charge it with these USB leads that are connected to the side of the Juno tower. So they just plug into the bottom of the device there. Now, with the microphones, they also have an audio input on the bottom of them. Now, what that means is we can grab an audio source from say an iPad or other multimedia and use an audio cable that connects into the um, bottom of the microphone. So I've actually just connected it there into the bottom of my student mic. And if I was to grab a smartphone, I can plug that in and I can actually have the audio play through this device and through the system. Now that's something that's really useful if you've got a TV that's mobile on wheels 
you can plug the audio from that TV into the student mic and you can send the sound wirelessly from the other side of the room into the Juno. You can also give this to a student on their desk to play audio from say an iPad. We have some students at the specialist schools who have um, light riders or newer devices for students who are not oral, so they don't speak, they, they use a iPad to communicate and they can plug this into the iPad to allow them to be heard in the classroom. So they're really much more than just a microphone for the students to use. Um, but saying that, that's the powerful thing. And if you've used one in the class, we know that using this student microphone adds real value to class participation. There's heaps of teachers that will say that once they've got this microphone and they introduce it into the learning every day, they found that kids who normally don't want to speak are more, more willing to participate in class conversation. And the speeches that we've had experience or worked with over the years also talk about the value that we have for students to be able to hear their own voices using the microphone from the sound field system. So that's really important as well in terms of speech development for younger children. How are you going there, Matt? You still, still with me? We were joking before about how doing this and not actually being able to see anybody in the room and presenting means that I am all alone and I'm hoping this sounds all right at the other end. And um, Mary will let me know if there's any questions. Now voice command, this is a function that um, isn't used very well often, but it's really nifty. So while we can adjust the volume and settings on this device here, what you can do with the Juno microphone is you can actually press and hold the mute button to activate a voice command. So if I press and hold this, I'm gonna wait to hear the beep and I'll explain what happens. Increase and the volume's increased. So I'm pressing and holding the button, I'm waiting for the beep, and I keep holding the button down, and then I say the voice command. So to reduce it, I'm gonna press, reduce, and then let go. So as long as you keep holding that button, issue the voice command after the beep, the action will occur. So we've managed to increase the volume, reduce the volume without actually going over the touch screen. So I can actually be standing at the back of the classroom, increase and if I wanted to increase it again I'd repeat that command and it goes up by two steps each time. Do you have a question there Mary, from one of our participants? Cool so I'll just continue on I've got um, a Question from one of the participants. So, yeah, good question. Question from Joanne. Now, would you know uh, front row, uh, it feels like I'm on a TV show here, doesn't it? So, question from one of our participants. Um, will this, the Juno be suitable for students with unilateral sided Baja? Answer yes. Um, Baja is often a device which we don't have any wireless connectivity to. Some of the kids may have a plug in Baja, they may have the headband style, but it's essentially a, a microphone. So any additional sound amplification we provide in the room is really beneficial. So by increasing the signal to noise and making speech clearer with the sound field system, the student with a unilateral loss will benefit significantly, um, often because they don't have any connected wireless microphones. And of course, a personal FM system or a wireless mic for those students may be somewhere they will go to eventually, um, but we see some kids with Bajas who just wear the headbands until perhaps they have um, a procedure that re remedies the, um, the problem with the hearing loss and the Baja or the bone conduction is in, an, in, sort of a, an intermediate solution. Um, but yes, answer is yes. They'll definitely benefit from using this with, um, with a Juno, with a Baja. Um, this slide here just really reiterates what I've just explained to you, how easy it is with those voice commands. Now with the Juno tower controls, these are 
found on the touch screen. Now you've got a few settings here that are really important to understand. And one of the biggest ones I want to stress to people is don't turn the system up too loud, okay? The system, when we have people calling us to say, hey, I've got a problem with Juno, it's, um, you know, it sounds screechy or something like that, it's usually because people are over amplifying. Now, nobody likes the sound of their own voice more than me, but even for myself, it's important to remember that I, even in a big classroom, I'd probably set this around 16 or 17. Anybody using this product uh, above 20, doesn't matter how big the room is, it's way too loud, okay? Um, it's about making it sound natural, not over amplifying it, because we don't want this to sound like the gymnasium sound system. We don't want to create more noise and reverberation in the room. It's important just to keep it calm and clear. And a good way to know whether it's working or not is not whether you hear your own voice really loudly, but more whether people about halfway down the room notice the difference when the microphone is on or off. And that's a good example of whether the system's set at the right level there. So keep that in mind and ask the students how that sounds. And they're usually your best gauge for how the system's working. We know that if you use the system a lot, your students will be the ones prompting you if you forget to put your microphone on in the morning, they'll be reminding you to put the mic on because they love it and like the sound of your voice when you use the Juno system. So you've got the 15 or the 17 on my display, which is the master volume, and then you have some settings. So in the settings, there's some um, advanced things you can do. We won't talk too much about today. The next one along is the music volume, which allows us to adjust the input. If we've got this connected to the TV, we can actually um, have the audio from the television coming through there. And one of the functions I like with priority teach, that's a function when I press that, it actually allows me to turn it on or off. Now priority teach is a function that means the teacher's voice has priority. So if the students are using this microphone, what will happen is if they're talking into this mic, but I speak, it cuts that microphone off, okay? So we don't hear that sound. Now, that goes the same way for if we're playing the audio from our TV through our Juno. It's really neat because rather than just putting more sound over the top of everything, the teacher's voice gently turns the volume of the TV down. You hear what I'm saying, but when I stop talking, the TV volume gently increases again. So it's a really valuable tool to helping everybody hear everything that's important, but not creating more noise, because more noise creates more stress. And that's particularly important for our kids with other learning difficulties, um, ASD, um, hearing loss as well. We know that keeping the room calmer is a key to um, key to a successful classroom. Sorry, Andrew, I lost you for a little bit oh, there, welcome. but I'm back. Welcome back, Mary. Um, I was just saying, I was just standing here talking to the team, but I got your message about the internet problem. So we'll be, we'll be good to go. And um, I've just answered the question online there. And um, yeah, you, you've, you've missed heaps of it, but I'm glad I've got you back. Now, this slide here just shows you a, um, a side shot of the Juno, and this is where there's a lot of connections. Now, these connections are really important. What we have on the side of our Juno is an audio output. Now, that allows us to connect sound into our laptop, into a wireless microphone uh, that a student might be using, um, anything that you want to do with that. That's the sound out of the Juno. So whatever's coming out of the speaker also comes out of that audio out. Now, it has a volume control on it, so you can adjust that um, level. So we can turn the sound up and down that's coming out of it. We've also got some audio inputs, and often we only use one of those, and it's often just connecting the TV um, or the projector the sound out of that into this device. And that's really important to do because if you've got a TV like this, it might look good, but it sounds really bad because the speakers are up behind here. So if we can plug our TV into our Juno with a little audio patch cable, 
If you haven't got one, contact us. We'll walk you through how to connect it. Um, that's going to add real value. The newer Junos also have Bluetooth on board. Now, that means if you've got a new TV, you can actually pair this wirelessly with your Juno and the sound comes through the Juno wirelessly. The other components down the bottom, um, uh, other than the inputs, we've got a couple of USB charging ports, which are useful for charging your student mic or teacher mic. And you have a serial port, which is probably not gonna be used too much for the activities that we do. Also to mention, don't forget on the front, is a quick connect button as, um, plug as well. So that's where you can actually just grab a normal sort of audio cable with a headphone type plug on either end. You can plug one in the front, one into your device and play sound through that. Just a quick question about the Juno um, and students with Bahas and um, yeah, we and you've already covered that. I saw that question. Yeah. So. Yeah, we've got that one covered, it's all good. Um, so recording audio with Juno. Now, there is actually some software that we have called Teacher Edition. You can download that for free from the Front Row website. It's a 45-day trial. I think the license is about $80 if you wanted to purchase it. But what that gives you is a simple little bit of software on your computer, which allows you to, at the click of a button, record, record the audio from your microphone, and if you want, what you're doing on the TV. This has real value and we've implemented this at um, Yarra Valley Grammar. We've used this and set it up probably, I'm gonna say six months ago at the beginning of the COVID stuff when they had a lot of kids learning remotely. What we did was they have Junos everywhere. We set them up with the software and it meant that in the class for the kids that weren't yet back at school, they were recording the key component at the start of the class. And this software really just gives you a simple way of putting that audio file somewhere on the network. And once we do that, the kids can access it from home, but whether it's via a Google Drive or some other learning management system that the schools might use, this is just an audio file. You can put it anywhere you like and you can share it with whoever you want to. But the powerful thing is, um, for people to be able to, if they're not at class, log in and listen. Kids who are in class but want to review. Um, I know even for myself, with I mean, only one child at home through home learning in recent months, sometimes being able to look back and listen to the teacher and how they explain key elements of um, what they're doing with English and language or mathematics could have been really helpful because the way I try to explain it is not necessarily the right way. So that's the real exciting potential that you've got capturing the audio from your Juno. And if you've got a Juno, the software is really simple to connect. This little display here shows you how to do it. And it's simply a matter of taking the audio out of the side of the Juno, connecting it into the audio input on your laptop. And if that's all you wanna do, you can then just click record and it's capturing the audio. And the reason this is better is because if you use it normally, well, you've got a um, microphone in your laptop here, but the problem is that's okay if you're standing here. If you walk around the room, you're further away from that microphone, the sound quality is reduced. By wearing the Juno mic, connecting our Juno to our laptop, wherever I'm walking, the sound pickup is right here. So the signal we're recording is loud and clear. And that's also something we can use for more advanced applications like students who might need to access live captioning. Now, again, we don't provide the software to do the captioning, but what we give you is clean audio because that's one of the weak points sometimes of giving people access to live captioning is if the sound we want to hear is too far from this microphone in the room, the person who's doing that service remotely can't hear the sound to give you the translation. Um, and that same thing goes for the students. So whoever's using a mic can pick it up loud and clear. <clears throat> this has been uh, a really simple opportunity for us to present to you some of the advantages of the Juno product. Mary, do we have any other questions that have come up throughout 
my presentation yet. Andrew, I'm surprised considering the great quality of teachers we have on board today. Maybe we should attempt them with some prizes, maybe. We have some warm umbrellas we can send out. We do have umbrellas, so are you are you just an impromptu quiz? Is that what we're running for? <laughs> Go for it. Surely people have some questions for Andrew. He's done his hair. He's got his uh, Mr. T haircut going at the moment or uh, his tribute to Dustin Martin, whichever way you want to look yeah, at it. You can look at it any way you like. That's right. <laughs> There is a question from Logie. Um, are we able to send out some notes? We definitely can, Logie. That's not an issue. Yeah, what we've got, we'll have this recorded as well. So um, we'll email a link through of this um, presentation and that'll give you somewhere you can share that with people as well. And as I said, we'll have a couple more of these coming up. So, um, you know, we're going to make a nuisance of ourselves in this way because it's a really powerful way for us to get our faces back into your classrooms without actually needing to be there. Did anybody else have any questions? I'm going to take that as a no. So I think, Mary, if I would just to wrap up, just to remind everybody that if you've got Junos in the classroom and you need support with them, you can contact us um, and you can talk to Jared, uh, Mary or myself um, about anything you need to do support. If you need extra PDs, if you need us to run this sort of thing one on one with a classroom or a school with teachers, we're happy to do that as well because it's really simple and it's important to do make sure you get this working. Um, just to wrap up, you might have had Junos that have been turned off for quite a while. There's nothing too much you need to worry about other than making sure turning them back on. Now with your batteries, they're gonna be okay for probably two to three years before you need to replace them. And when they need replacing, you'll find that after charging it, you'll turn it on and the light will be green, but it'll only stay green for a couple of seconds and then it will go red. That means it's time for that battery to be changed over. Other than that, I don't think you'll have too many problems as you start off back to school. Um, but we're here to help. Andrew, just a, sorry, just a quick question from Alison about team teaching and two mics. Is that oh, possible? Yeah, good question. So with team teaching, yes, it is. So this product out of the box has two channels. That means we can use two microphones simultaneously. We do have a microphone expansion module, which we, we can put in the back of this device. And that lets me use three more microphones. So if you really wanted a truly collaborative environment, and we've done this in a couple of settings where we've got um, two teachers microphones, two student microphones, and they're all working through that, that platform. So to do that, what you need is one more student, uh, sorry, one more teacher's mic, and you need that microphone expansion module. So the cost of doing that is probably about $400 by the time you add the mic and the module. Excellent. Ali, did that answer your question? Yes, good. Any other questions, guys? You can ask them later and come back to us um, in the email if you'd like to. Um, I think I'll... <laughs> I think a few people will be joining us again tomorrow. So um, if, if you think of questions that come up from today's and you're welcome to, you know, go, oh, actually, when you spoke about Juno, um, you know, can we ask about that question? We're happy to go over them again. That's not an issue. Um, so we sh I'm sure that you've got applications going in for some new students next year. So if you need anything from us in the way of quotes or anything, um, please let us know. You've got all our details and you can definitely get a hold of us if you need to. Andrew, did you have anything else you want to close with? Well, for me, guys, thanks for listening. Sorry about the hiccup at the start. I'll be bang on 3.45 tomorrow if you're coming. And oh. um, we do appreciate you continuing to support us and our business. And we look forward to hearing from you or seeing you somewhere really soon. So thanks very much. Hold on, Andrew. There's a question that's come up. Sorry. Uh, schools fund these this is probably um so yes the junos can be funded under accessible buildings um program um so they are you can get them um if that's what you what the recommendation is 
the program is changing a little bit and I think um, they will be sending out an email letting you know of the changes. I guess the nuts and bolts of accessible buildings is there. I think they're removing the $5,000 cap. Um, so there's a little bit of information and hopefully um, things will run a lot smoother for our students next year. Great stuff. Everyone have a great Sarah, evening. Sarah, did that answer your question? I think we're good. Oh, hold on one second. More questions. The, the mention of an umbrella and people are bang on, mate. Um, NDIS. Um, NDIS is really, um, it's a, an interesting topic and I might leave that one with you, Andrew. Yeah, case by case, I think. I mean, if somebody really wants to spend their NDIS funds on this product, we are a registered NDIS provider it's reasonable that this is low risk assistive technology and would be deemed reasonable and necessary to support a student who had a package through the NDIS. Um, I can tell you that because we've supplied other products that are used in the classroom for the same application. It's just a question of us educating the families about whether that's the best use of their money. And I would always personally encourage them to try and go the route of firstly talking to their school because I, uh, you know, whether it's right or wrong, my personal opinion is the place that these kids are enrolled at to learn should be the first place that's providing an accessible environment for them. I don't know um, how much of it should be necessarily put back on you to fund yourself. Um, but if you've got money to burn in that NDIS package and you're looking for something useful in the classroom, sure, you can probably fund a Juno. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I'll leave you all, otherwise I'll just keep asking questions. Marion, I'll be here till sunset. Um, <laughs> um, you've, you've got one more actually. <laughs> Catholic schools. <don't laughs> How about Catholic schools and funding? I, I think, um, again, I think the same applies. I think Catholic schools have some funding hidden away somewhere and it's about trying to access that funding. Um, so talk to them. I think they have a similar sort of structure um, like ABP, it's kind of hidden within their own department, though. Are you under that same understanding, Andrew? Yeah, look, it's a case by case for them. It's certainly not as cut and dried as your ABP in state schools. You need to talk to, uh, if you have a, um, you know, a student with a, a disability, learning difficulty or something applicable to using this stuff in the classroom, um, you need to talk to student services. But in most cases, the Catholic primary schools we work at tend to be much more self-funding these solutions. I'm seeing less and less simple applications through a certain department at the CEO for funding this stuff. Um, uh, but saying that, you know, we do in the, in the market of using this as mainstream technology, I can tell you that there's probably a lot more Catholic primary schools investing in this technology in their classrooms than there are state schools. Um, you know, take from that what you will, but it may be because they don't have necessarily this direct route, or it may be that there's a little bit more um, independence in terms of the principal operating the school. And we work very closely with them in, in building their school's infrastructure. And it's not about responding to the needs of one or two particular kids. They're taking this on board because they love the idea of Soundfield, it makes sense to making everybody's life easier. The teacher can talk more clearly. The students all hear better and, you know, they have a, a better learning environment. So that's my take on what happens with this mostly in the Catholic primary schools. So thanks, everybody, for listening. This is I'm going to sign off now, Mary. All right? If you're Correct. All right. And we'll see um, some of you tomorrow. And if any of you, like we said earlier, have any questions or need to contact us, um, feel free to reach out. Um, our, you can contact us on info at wom.com.au if you don't have our direct email addresses. Thanks very much. All right, guys. Perfect. See you later. Have a good evening. See you guys. Have a good night. Bye.